Gunpowder was invented in China, and yet it was the European nations that perfected weapons technology and went forth and launched world colonies and empires. How were the Europeans able to innovate so much with firearms and seemingly leave the rest of the world behind when they weren't even the ones to invent gunpowder? The answer might have nothing to do with culture, race, religion, age of reason, or anything like that. The answer might be as simple as geography. That's right, sixth grade students, it may actually be useful. In this video, we will explore how and why Europeans became ascendant in firearms when gunpowder technology actually started in China. Number one, geography of Europe. So before Europeans really incorporated firearms, there were already changes to European warfare by the 1300s. While heavy cavalry had been a staple of European warfare, battles like Bannockburn, Courtrai, Morgarten, and Laupen showed that heavy infantry pike formations and blocks supported by archers or crossbowmen were more than capable of beating heavy cavalry. It is important to note that this infantry shift was already happening when firearms came into the picture. That said, there's a reason this shift was able to occur. Western and Central Europe being settled agrarian societies could logistically support these heavier armies. Western and Central Europe had the farmland necessary to support armies foraging and surviving during campaigns and sieges. The population density for Western and Central Europe meant that a heavy army had the resources to support itself in the field. This means that if you're fighting in Western or Central Europe, you can rely on heavy cavalry or infantry and not have to worry much about your army scattering or starving to death. Wagon trains were slow, expensive, and difficult to protect and maintain. Successful armies needed to forage and live off the land, and Europe was the perfect place for this. Early firearms were usually cannons or other siege implements, but Europe had the food and population densities necessary for transporting cannons and other logistically difficult items. I know we all love pitch battles in history, but sieges and logistics are a huge part of warfare, and Europe spent a lot of time being at war, what with the whole nothing approaching a centralized state thing. Europe's geography meant that Europeans could support firearms and really had use for them in their frequent siege battles. As hand weapons came to be, European geography meant that these armies did just fine logistically and their speed and weight wasn't really an issue for them. So you have constantly warring people in an area that can support a slow and heavy army. When firearms get to the point where you can wield them as a single man, you know your arquebus, your matchlock, flintlock, etc., Europeans had no issues adapting even with their cumbersome size and weight. Kenneth Chase argues that by the 1500s, before the era of the flintlock even, Europe had already outpaced most other places on Earth, save for the Ottoman Empire. But how could they beat China, who invented gunpowder, or the so-called gunpowder empires like those in India or in Persia? The answer is still geography, but isn't as much about what the Europeans had, like the dense populations or good farmland, but what they didn't have. Number two, borders with nomads. So, dear viewer, you're probably asking, well, if southern China had dense populations and plentiful farmland, how come they didn't win the firearms race? And you're right, that fighting within Chinese cities and fighting between Chinese armies, China definitely had use for guns, and that southern China could easily support these heavy infantry gun-wielding armies. But China wasn't just fighting settled people with lots of farmland. China was also fighting nomads. To the north and the northwest, China had a huge border with various nomadic people, and this had been a problem for years. I mean, come on, the Great Wall of China had been a work in progress since Qin Shi Huangdi. The problem with fighting nomads is that they don't have to fight, and they are faster than you. They are incredibly mobile with their horses and their pastoral lifestyle. They don't need to get bogged down in a siege and defend a city because they can move. They don't have a settled population center to defend and force themselves into a fight. If a settled society attacks into nomadic territory, they can just melt away and let logistics ravage the agrarian army until they're forced to retreat. So what does this have to do with guns? As we've established, early cannons were heavy and cumbersome, and early hand firearms weren't much better. Look at early musketeers in Europe using a support rod due to the weight of the weapon. Now imagine your enemy is on horseback, and light horseback, and you're dragging a musket and cannons around. While yes, you can shoot a guy off a horse, that is only if the enemy gives battle, and remember, nomads don't have to. 
if you were fighting nomads, you had to try and keep your army light and make your logistics practical. This meant that China could never fully go all in on mass arquebusier blocks or pike and shot armies the way European army could. They needed light cavalry and an army that wasn't bogged down by heavy infantry and heavy cannons. All settled peoples that bordered nomads were prevented, at least a little bit, from fully converting to the sort of pike and shot armies Europe has by the 1600s. Look at Eastern Europe. They were the buffer between the Mongols and Central Europe, but even with the collapse of the Mongol Empire, nomadic inheritors didn't just go away. While nations like Hungary and Muscovy certainly used firearms, they couldn't convert all the way as quickly as nations in Central or Western Europe. They were more likely to use a mixture of wagons and firearms, so they were more mobile than a pike and shot force, but still had some firearms when they could. This makes sense since they bordered nomads and they bordered Central Europe. This middle ground shows that where you were was as important in gun usage as who you were or what you believed or any other factors. Rich farmland and dense populations were a start, but it was the freedom from nomadic neighbors that really allowed Central and Western Europe to embrace their heavy infantry, their sieges, and to innovate firearms further and faster than anyone else. But this video can't end here, because while it may answer why Europe beat China in the firearms race, there is a place who had similar armies to Europe at one point, similar geography to Europe, and still didn't develop like Europe. Number 3. Japan Japan gets firearms in 1542, which seems late compared to documented cannon use in Europe by 1371. That said, Japan picked up guns quickly and loved them. As it turns out, Japanese geography and warfare was eerily similar to that of Europe in the 1500s. With all of the mountains and islands of Japan, you get pretty concentrated population in farm centers, not necessarily in mega cities, but in lots of smaller urban areas. You get castles and sieges and heavy cavalry and infantry and all the other things that Europe had. In these conditions, guns thrived. Japan made quick use and adapted their armies as quickly as they could get the guns to fill them. They even worked to manufacture guns when they could. So, being a bit behind but catching up, how come Japan wasn't right there with Europe in empire building? Well, this time, the answer may be political slash cultural. Guns were really popular in the Japanese Warring States period, a time where decentralized warlords and their fiefdoms fought for supremacy while an ineffectual central authority looked on more or less helplessly. This period lasted from around 1467 to around 1650. While this constant bloodshed was a time of great military innovation, you can imagine that the measures of prosperity that a regular person would care about struggled and fell by the wayside. When all was said and done, Japan ended up with a new system, the Tokugawa Shogunate. Leading up to this unification was an important law that would cut down on rapid advances in firearm innovation. In 1588, Toyotomi Hideyoshi was one of the men responsible for unification, and he created a law banning peasants from possessing weapons, be it sword or firearm. While Hideyoshi and later Tokugawa Ieyasu, the man for whom the shogunate was named, still used firearms, including in two excursions to Korea in the 1590s, the shogunate as a whole made Japan a closed country, and greatly limited their contact with the outside world. More than this, though, was the fact that the shogunate really did bring about around 200 years of peace. Guns were introduced and widely needed during the period of war, but after that, there wasn't much need to constantly innovate and produce weapons. Japan was at peace and isolated, so they didn't give up guns per se, but they really didn't need to keep up with the global arms race because they were having a prosperous golden age. As word of the Opium Wars hit Japan, and when America sailed over in 1853, Japan modernized very quickly and caught back up. Famously, by 1904 and 1905, they were able to do the unthinkable and defeat Russia, a European power. They then took their place at the table of great powers, despite the years of peace where they didn't need to innovate. But the Japanese case shows that geography could set a country up, but politics and culture could actually change their fate as far as when they would innovate with weapons. Number four, conclusions. 
Firearms were slow and heavy early on, especially the handheld varieties, so they were really an infantry weapon or artillery unit until the matchlock was picked up by cavalry. Europe had a huge advantage in gun innovation because Europe was densely populated and had plentiful farmland, so armies had fewer difficulties foraging and surviving off the land on campaigns. More importantly, Western and Central Europe didn't have to contend with nomads. Eastern Europe, China, and most of the Islamic world had to look with an eye over their shoulder towards the incredibly light nomadic armies that didn't need population centers. This meant that they had to have lighter armies that could hold nomads and even attempt excursions into nomadic lands. Because of this, they were never able to fully convert to heavy, European-style, pike-and-shot, or even full flintlock armies. Frequent warfare was also a driving force behind Europe being better with guns, as Japan's peaceful Tokugawa era shows just how quickly a country can abandon innovation if it doesn't need it. Overall, geography, both the fertility of the land, but also proximity to nomadic peoples, explains why Europe, especially Western and Central Europe, came out on top of the global firearms race. If you want more history like this, leave a like or a comment. Subscribe for more content, as I have some World War II, Civil War, and American Revolution ideas coming up. And as always, stay excited about history. Thanks for watching.